first thing we want to cover obviously is the size of the shell so um, this is a 12 inch shell um, we're going to send all of uh, the, 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 the sizes of all the drums that we'll be converting uh, to Pintec also we want to take a measurement from this vent hole to the nearest lug where we're going to mount our bridge now this is the lug that we've decided on to mount the bridge um, and I've marked it here with a sharpie uh, you don't have to mark it with a sharpie you can mark it with a pencil um, or, or whatever um, I needed it to stay here for video purposes and it, for it to be bright for video purposes so I marked it with a sharpie um, and so we take a measurement from here to here and what we have is four inches okay or three inches straight across um, I sent the four inch number now keep in mind Pintech will will give you an extra inch as well so you're, you're even you know you're not gonna be tight here um, they will kind of over exaggerate just a little bit so you've got some work you've got some room to play with on the measurement um, and when it comes to cable management that's something that's very very important um, so you can route your cables properly uh, within the drum um, and we will also talk about taping um, all of that down to keep it nice and neat um, and as, as well as keeping uh, connection points from being crimped okay I want to talk about parts what we've what what we get shipped with our MIDI conversion um, is a few things. Uh, we have two of the foam trigger trigger pads, um, and you'll notice that one side is dark and one side is a light gray with the blue dots on both. Okay, the blue dots um, are sticky, and um, that's what this side is going to. The gray side is up. So this gray side is what you want touching your drum head. Um, and this is what's going to actually be mounted on top of the piezo. Okay. To, to, to remove the blue backing on the sticky, I recommend using a razor blade. Your fingernails just aren't going to be enough to, to flick that. So you just grab a razor blade. And be very careful, obviously, with the razor blade. Um, you know, to... To, to just kind of you know flick it up a little bit and pull that off it'll it'll save you a bunch of frustration next I want to talk about the quarter inch female connector now in this case we have uh, this is a stereo we're, we're doing a, uh, a dual trigger zone so this is a stereo uh, connection and then we have the the head and the rim uh, connections which both are marked, and this will actually insert into our vent hole um, when all said and done. We, uh, Pintec also does a pigtail version um, where it mounts in the vent hole and then you have lines coming, them out, coming out, uh, a two-channel line uh, as well. Now, You'll notice that we have four triggers, two head triggers and two rim triggers. Now, Pintech sends all four triggers, basically giving, giving us a spare trigger for each of the rim as well as the head. If something goes wrong in the uh, install process, um, we have another trigger um, for both rim and head. Um, if if, if one is damaged later on down the road, we also already have one. They, they give us a spare. Um, so that's very nice. Next, what we have is the bridge. Now, I've taken this bridge apart um, for the video. But this bridge comes, to get, comes screwed together like this. It'll actually have a piece of tape on the, tri on the bridge noting which drum it goes to with a bunch of electrical tape along with that small sticky note on top of that. So the electrical tape I've set aside and that's what we'll be using 
to do our cable management. Um, and then of course, this one's for the 12 inch Tom. Um, so this is how I know that this goes for this drum. Okay, you'll also notice the blue dots. Uh, the blue dots are the sticky um, and Pintex sends uh, extra of those as well. If you want to line um, more, uh, and why the tape is on the bridge is it, it when you stick these two together, um, it provides a, 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 a piece of rubber, uh, sticky rubber, between the two pieces of metal, which cut down on all the vibrations. Now you, th there's more tape, there's more dots that you can apply to even secure it even more. In this case, we're not going to need to because they are spread out far enough apart to where there's not, there's not enough touching for it to concern us. Um, but that's, that's completely up to you as the end user if you want to add more tape or not. There's already going to be tape on them when they come. Um, and if you would like to add more, um, they do come as dots. So you'll cut them down to center and, and, and split them like that. Um, but we'll talk about that bridge in a little bit. You'll also notice that the back of the, the triggers also have a little, little foam uh, sticky as well that has a backing that will peel off um, that, will, that will mount to the heads. Now, uh, mount to the, to the rim and our, our bridge. Keep in mind, and I'll probably mention this a few times, when you do install these triggers, you never need to push down on the triggers themselves. You just kind of, you place them and go. Um, the sticky is very adhesive. Um, it, it, it sticks great. So you just set it in place and it's pretty much done. Um, as far as the head trigger goes, when you mount your foam pad to the top, you'll, it'll, you know, obviously you're going to give it a little push. So that'll secure it even that, that much more. You never, ever have to push down on any of your triggers to mount them into place. Also, with the kit, of course, comes two heads, top and bottom, um, for, the, for the acoustic to MIDI conversion. These are very quiet, very durable. Um, uh, they, you know, as far as acoustics go, um, they are going to silence your drums. Um, somebody in the next room will be able to do whatever they wish, watch TV, uh, whatever, and never know that you're actually, you know, playing your favorite whatever. Um, very, very quiet, very, very acoustically pleasing. Um, and, you know, you still can tune a little bit to the actual toms. Um, so if you didn't want to plug in and you just wanted to practice, you know, like a practice pad type setup, you're still going to get a small amount of acoustics. And I mean very, very small uh, amount of acoustics to, to kind of um, just tap along with and get your chops down, all your rudiments um, and things like that. Great heads, um, very durable um, and very acoustically quiet, which is when one of the things that when we're doing an acoustic MIDI conversion, one of the, one of the priorities that we're that we're looking at is to kind of quiet this thing down a little bit and um, and uh, j just keep the, the, the rehearsal space or the, um, the actual venue where we're playing, um, just keep the volume at a, at a, at a decent level. Great heads, um, can't say enough about the, about the heads themselves. Okay, now I want to talk about the bridge assembly. Now here I've taken the set screws out of the bridge. When you get the bridge, all the set screws will be in. And you'll actually have a piece of tape, electrical tape, wrapped around this center point with another piece of tape on top of that. The, the piece of tape on top will, just, will, will tell you which size drum this bridge is meant for. Each one of these bridges is cut to size for each one of your individual drums, which goes is why we did all of our measurements earlier. Now, you'll notice the blue dots. Now, Pintech supplies the blue dots, one set on here, plus they, they send you a whole row 
of extra blue dots. And what we've done is we've added another set to there just for that. And it, that's why they send those extra pieces so you can do the same thing. You can add another set. And what this does is there's a little, there's a little rubber piece that's got double-sided tape on both sides that when you sandwich these two together, what ends up happening is it, it provides a, a small cushion between the two pieces of metal, just ensuring that there's no rattling. Once you, once you tighten all four of your set screws back, there shouldn't be any rattling anyway. But what we've gone ahead and done is added two of those extra pieces, and Pintech does a much neater job than what I've done here with these, with these half circles. Um, but you, you can see what, what we've done, and we'll remove that later on down the road. Also what I want to talk about with the bridge is because of this is an older drum set, um, these, the, the lug screws are a little bit thicker than what you're going to see in today's product. Okay, um, so what we've had to do is we've had to file this groove where these set screws go into, um, and that's how they sit on our drum. Um, these screws were a bit thicker than what, what the standard screw is. So what we did is we just had to file this down a little bit um, and making sure that we took off equal amount of metal on both sides of, of the groove. Um, so we just stuck a file in there and put it flat on the table to make sure that we've got enough, you know, that we've got a, you know, a nice solid surface to work on and then file down. It took me five minutes to do um, both sides or both, you know, both sides of the bridge um, to make it big enough for this. Now you, you don't want to go too, you don't want to go farther than what you need to to actually fit that set screw in there and then to be able to move it back and forth nice and freely. You don't want to take out too much of that metal. So I just filed out just enough to make that move freely so we can do our measurements. So while we're there, we'll go ahead and set this half of the bridge in place as I get my screwdriver on my, on my spot here. There we go. Okay. Now I'm not going to tighten. I'm just going to just set those in place. Make sure they're held. I'm going to do this other side here. Do the same thing over here. Just kind of snugging those up just a little bit, just to kind of make sure that they hold, so they don't fall while we're trying to do our measurements. That should do it. Now the rule of thumb is to to measure should be two inches from the top from the, from the top of the top of the bridge to the, to the shell of your drum this ensuring that when this piece goes on here um, you're going to be an eighth of an inch this is going to stick up above above the head an eighth of an inch and you're going to use the I'm pretty sure I've talked about this before but you're going to want to make sure that you're using this gray side. I can't stress that part enough. You're going to notice that this side is, is, is a lot softer than this part of the, the, the foam pad. This side is a little bit more, um, uh, just, it's, 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 it's a more compressed uh, piece of foam um, where this is a little bit spongier, giving your head some play and seeing that a good portion of this is going to actually be sticking up and your head's actually going to be pushing down on top of this, um, the, the soft play is crucial. Okay, but we'll get to that. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to measure, just making sure where we want. Now, I've done five of these drums already, so I know that at my, at my l highest point in, in, this, in this part here, that's... I'm up as far as I can go, and that's exactly the two-inch spot that I want to be at. Um, I'm still leaving this one loose so I can do my final measurements. Now, um, we're going to place this piece 
in there and it'll line up once we get everything in there. Um, but the first thing we want to do anytime that we're using the sticky tape, except for of course on on the, any of the triggers or anything, but anytime where that we're sticking the sticky to the either side of the drum for your rim trigger or the top of your bridge, we're going to want to clean the metal. Um, and what we're using is just a, a paper towel and a dab of rubbing alcohol or um, uh, isopropyl al alcohol. You're probably not going to make the same mess with it that I am. And I'm going to do the back side where this tape is going to stick. And I'm going to do the front side for right now. We're going to end up doing this top side one, one more time anyway before we stick the trigger to it. But um, I just want to just want to clean it up and get it ready to actually stick to the piece. Keep keep your towel handy. Um, and now you want to peel the blue side off off your sticky. And just get it ready to actually stick your bridge center point, center piece, excuse me, to both ends of the bridge. Now again, you're going to notice that this this sticky has a, a you know a good sized depth to it, not real real thick, but thick enough to where it's going to cut down on any vibrations. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bridge in place just without sticking it because I want to make sure that this part of the bridge in between you can see I probably I've stuck this before in between these two here this is where our, we're going to end up putting our head trigger our head piezo is going to is going to sit right in here um, so what I like to do is I like to make sure that this is the center of the drum you don't want to go off to the left or right um, you want a nice, you know, nice center. Now you can do it any way you'd like. You can measure. You can use your tape measure to measure out either side. Or what I'm doing is I'm using that. I'm using my nice straight line that I'm going to actually end up using later on down the road as well. You're going to want a yardstick or what I have here is a piece of thin metal. Um, that will go across the drum that you're gonna you're gonna use it for this purpose as well as gauging the height of your uh, actual uh, piece of foam now again um, I've already done five of the drums so I know where I'm at um, you can also set it over here and just kind of kind of see where it's gonna set um, once you're once you've got everything lined up I'm not tight yet so um, none of the measurements are actually gonna work so what I'm going to do, I'm going to set that aside, and I'm going to put my line across and just kind of eyeball where that, where that center piece is. So I know that piezo is going to be the center of that bridge. And then you stick your bridge down, okay? Which will hold it in place while you work on it a little bit. But what we're going to do is we're going to end up putting our set screws back in because we're, we're ready for that now. Um, and I recommend using all four of the set screws um, where you can, of course. Um, and you want to keep the set screws obviously away from where the piezo is going to be mounted. You don't want to ground the metal of your piezo on anything on the side anything that's metal touching that 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 brass piece there that that gold color piece you don't want that touching metal including the screws um, and that is uh, uh, important um, on on your metal snare if you're using a chrome snare um, you want to make sure that that's not sitting on an, an, on any metal um, you want to make sure that that's sitting still and we'll, we'll talk more about that here in a minute what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, 
I'm going to go ahead and put all my, my set screws in, um, and I'll go ahead and turn the cameras off um, so you're not bored to death. Okay, so we've tightened down our set screws. I did want to mention that in our case, the bridge forms a cradle where the piezo will be mounted here. Depending on where your lug is mounted on your drum and where um, this screw is here is depending on, on how you're going to turn this bridge. You can do what I've done and form the cradle to the bridge to get your two inch measurement um, to get that that get this piezo the head foam up to the, the appropriate level which is the head will be eight inches or I'm sorry an eighth of an inch below this point when applying it so basically it'll push down that foam so depending on where your lugs mount is depending on how you'll have this bridge um, you can you can actually turn this bridge, which I've done in some some cases. I don't want to turn this one, um, but you can turn basically um, this entire bridge assembly around, which I'll show you here. I don't want to scratch up the drum doing that. Um, I'll show you a little bit. But you see how it, you know, you turn it the other way around so you're basically going to mount it this way and obviously you'll want to have your set screws facing the other way so you don't have these ugly nuts on the on the top of the head um, but this is another way that you can you can utilize the same space you're using the same flat side um, nothing really changes um, in how the bridge assembles you still set this inside the cradle inside you know the, the center part of the bridge still sets inside the two outer sides of the bridge and then this part will just give your your measurement from there now in this drums case I cannot do that because I have these are you know double mounted screws so I have another screw down here that will uh, bump into this spot and that's not what I really need to do anyway um, this position here uh, is the perfect uh, placement for this specific drum. But if you have to flip this bridge, um, that is fine um, to, to flip it. Um, again, just plan for your uh, set screws to be um, reversed as well, just because you don't want the nuts showing and you don't want them, you know, on the upward side of the drum. Okay, so I'm just going to give these a good snug without going completely tight because I have not done my measurements yet. And I want to level as well. So the first thing I'm going to check is to see where I'm sitting on that two inch, which I'm perfect on that side and I'm perfect on that side. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a level across it just to make sure that my, my, my bridge is is level this way as well as level this way so in this case I have um, uh, I have two spirit levels um, which will do the job for me um, you can always you know turn yours back and forth however um, to, to accomplish that so I'm gonna just make sure that that's level um, I know that my cable may or may not be a little out of whack too so that's perfect. Um, so you just want to make sure it's you know you don't want your pa you don't want your your foam sitting at at a completely cocked angle. You you will have that piece of foam will be um, an eighth of an inch into the the drum head. Um, so it it it'll it, it you know even if like you, I just did there, even if it's turned a little bit, I'm just gonna stop talking and give that a good 
Good crank in there. There we go. Much better. And then I'm going to double check my measurement. Double check my level. And that's perfect. sure my table's a little a little out of line but I'm just gonna double check this this one over here to make sure I didn't push it down yeah I did push it down just a little bit but crank that down there we go Same thing on this side. Okay, good. I'm good with that. Now, time to mount our center piezo. And I'm going to put a little bit more alcohol on our towel. I'm going to just wipe the center of that real quick where I'm going to stick that piezo to. Now, when sticking the piezo, always keep in mind you don't want to push down on the piezo. There's no need for it. The sticky is uh, it, it's sticky enough. To, as soon as you apply it, it'll pretty much hold. And then when you put your foam um, pad over top of it, um, you'll, it'll, it'll, you, know, you don't have to push down on that really hard either. So you're, you know, it's going to stick. You're going to be fine. You'll put your head on. Everything will be flattened. Uh, everything will be snug and in place without having to put your finger on it. You don't want to put your finger and you don't want to push down um, and, and on, on the piezo. And you don't want that brass or that, that gold metal there. You don't want that touching any piece of metal. So you want to make sure your set screws are far enough behind to where you can set that in there without um, without touching any pieces of metal. Um, that's especially important in your snare drum, um, and we'll go over that with the snare drum. Now, um, I am a big fan of cable management. So um, I know that my, my female um, quarter inch in is going to come into this hole, into this vent hole here. So I want to... I want this without crimping these two, this, this, this red and black here, I, I, you know, you don't want to go this way and then have to bend that back um, unless, of course, you know, that's what's going to work out. But you see how that's kind of at an angle. So what I would rather do is I'd rather do all my, my cable management off to this side. And then when I tape it up, I'll make sure that there's no crimps um, and there's no bend, hard bends in the line. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this one and again you can use your razor blade to you know very carefully pull this piece of, of backing which you'll see why you see why you probably could use that um, and again I'm running that straight I'm making sure that I'm centered you can use your Use your piece of metal again. Make sure you're over top of your lugs. And then your center. And again, just set it. And it's good. No need to push it down. Can't stress that enough. There's no need to push that down. Now, now I'm going to install our quarter inch female. Now, for those of you that cannot uh, remove your your um, y your your uh, grommet here um, or don't want to remove your grommet there are pigtails to where um, you can in where, where the wires will come in through that same vent hole and um, you won't have the same mounting bracket it'll just wire tie and you'll have pigtails sticking out to where you plug in your cables. I've chose to do the other way around. 
I like the neatness um, of the of, of using the vent hole, um, and I just think it's it's just kind of cool anyway. So plus, you know, for cable management, I like the idea of just plugging in the drum. But for those of you that can't do that, um, you know, Pintech does give a pigtail option, um, and will cut it three to six inches. Um, so you have plenty of slack on that pigtail line um, on the outside of your drum. Uh, again, call Pintech on that, and whatever is going to work for your specific application, um, they will be more than happy to work with you. The nice thing about working with a company like Pintech Drums is the fact that when you call, somebody there that will answer the phone that knows exactly what you need and exactly what needs to happen for your application. Um, they are made in America, um, which is important to a lot of people. And, um, you know, it's nice to be able to call and the person that picks up the phone um, knows exactly uh, what's going on in the manufacturing um, end of things and has done installs, you know, for the last uh, 10 plus years. Um, so they know exactly what your problems are, may or may not be, and they're always available for that. Um, so you saw we put the washer on, we put that nut back on, um, we've installed, we've actually just thrown our, our uh, quarter inch female into our vent hole, okay? And I'm not gonna snug, I'm just gonna snug that finger wise. I'm not gonna put the open end wrench on that yet, just cause I wanna make sure that our cable management um, is squared away so I can turn this back and forth um, and, and, and make sure that I get the right uh, length on the cable uh, or, or the right bend in the cables to do my cable, my cable management. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to remove um, our lug screw from where we're going to put our rim trigger okay um, and the same thing goes for the rim trigger you have sticky and then your piezo side okay so your sticky is going to obviously going to go up against the drum and the the uh, lug screw will go right through that hole um, so let's do that now just pull this screw Go ahead and apply. And you can tell I've, I've got all my screws loosened up for the purpose of the video. Now there's a piece of tape on the back of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move that out of the way. Again with my rubbing alcohol. And actually, we'll put a little bit more on the, on the towel. I'm just going to wipe where that sticky is going to end up sticking. Now, when it comes to this one, um, you can tape it down. Um, I've left, when I do my testing, I leave the, I, I don't stick that one right away. Um, just so I can do all my testing um, prior to actually sticking it. Uh, if you do have to remove, uh, for whatever reason, if you have to remove one of your piezos or, or, or sticky tape, get yourself a razor blade and just get up under it and, and, and slowly work at that piece of uh, sticky. Same thing with the back side here. Just slowly grab that razor blade and, you know, slice that off. And then when you have, you know, this in your hand, you can clean off the residue and the same thing with wherever you have it stuck to the, either the metal or the side of the wood, you can clean that off again and re-stick it. Um, Pintech supplies plenty of uh, these extra dots as well as the blue dots. So if you do need to um, re-stick it or take it apart or whatever the case may be, you have the you have the all the tools to to, to do so. And again, we have extra just in case we've damaged something here. Or if we damage something down the road, I have two. I have a head trigger and a rim trigger still left over. 
All right, so I'm just going to, I am very sure. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that piece of sticky tape. And again, you can use the, the back of a razor blade or X-Acto knife or whatever you're comfortable with. Um, and I'm going to set this rim trigger in place just like that. Okay, and now I'm keeping in mind my cable management and what I'm going to want to do with it as well as I'm doing this. And that's something that you're going to want to keep in mind um, while you're doing your conversion as well. You're going to want to keep your, your cable management um, uh, in mind as you, as you do the process. So knowing what I need to do and where I need to be um, is crucial um, to, to my process. Um, and to the cable management aspect. Um, so now uh, we put on one last piece is a foam piece. Now again, um, we have the gray side and the black side, or a darker gray. This side's pretty durable. It's a harder piece of foam, and this is pretty soft and spongy. Um, the spongy side is up, touching the head, and this other side, uh, the, the, the harder side, is going to go down on top of the piezo. So we're going to remove that blue dot, and then we have sticky side there, and we're just going to set it right on that trigger, making sure we, you know, cover the, cover it round, and, and that'll do it. D don't need to push down, don't need to do any of that thing, any of that. The head will do all that work for us. So what I'm going to do now is I'm, before I put any heads on and before I take this piece off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test both the head and the rim triggers through my module um, before, I, before I close this drum up and, um, and send it on its way. Um, I'm going to, and, and tighten this screw, I'm going to end up tightening that screw down as well afterwards but we'll go through that let me let me do my test um, and make sure that both of our triggers are working properly um, and then I will tighten down the the female jack input as well as uh, that rim trigger all right so we've tested both of our triggers our head trigger as well as our rim trigger um, both work brilliantly. We've obviously plugged them in, and you'll notice uh, this one's marked head going to the head trigger, and this one is marked rim going to the rim trigger. Now, when it comes to cable management, those are the things that I'm going to do after. Um, I'm going to put those where I like them, um, where there's no crimping going on, and I can actually get to these connections if I need to quickly. Um, so I'll, you know, put one there and, and one here. Um, and then you know do the same thing with the rim trigger just to keep them nice and neat and out of the way um, and keep the keep the cables away from one another a little bit um, so I'm not getting any re-triggering just a little bit it's, you're not going to get any of that anyway I just you know it's something that I'm being particular about um, now we can now it's the uh, we've one last thing um, want to make sure that that measurements correct um, we are in eight eighth of an inch. I've already done the measurement here. That's something that you want to check um, prior to putting the head on. Uh, is just make sure that you're at the eighth inch mark from the top of uh, this this plane here to the top of the trigger. Um, and this piece this this piece of metal bends a little bit, so I've had to you know just go across like this. You might want to get a sturdier piece of metal or a yardstick or whatever to make sure that your your measurements right. That eighth inch is going to stick up higher than the head, and when you put the head on, it'll compress down, and when you tighten it down, it'll 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 sit flush. This way, you're always putting pressure on that trigger onto the bottom of the head. So what we're going to go ahead and do is peel that sticky. And it's time to put our Pentec mesh head on which again are very durable um, and they give a great, uh, well, they, they, uh, you're not going to get a whole lot of acoustics out of them um, 
which is is the point, especially in recording purposes. Um, you're not going to get, or, or you know, in in a rehearsal space, or um, in uh, even a gig setting. Um, you know, there, you're not going to get a uh, a lot of acoustics uh, bleeding back into the mics. Um, you're going to get a nice a nice tone that's coming right into the board out of your out of your process or whatever you choose to do. All right, what we've converted here is a 22 inch bass drum. Now what Pintech recommends with a 20 inch, 22, even an 18 inch bass drum, um, your bass drum is a single zone trigger. Um, with that size of a drum, uh, with this being a 22, um, you're going to get a lot of slap back is what I call it. Um, basically ripples when you hit your beater up against the center of the bass drum head. It's going to come into the to the edge and then back out from the edge um, and create a slap back on your trigger. Now Pintech uh, triggers are very, very sensitive. Um, and a lot of it you can dial, you're going to dial it within your module, but with that size of a of a of a, of a drum, um, you're going to get a, a massive amount of slap back off the head. Um, it's going to ripple back into your um, your trigger. Um, Pintech uh, describes it uh, like dropping a rock into a bucket of water. It ripples from the center out and then back. Um, so to stop the slap back um, co from coming into your trigger, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to install that trigger two inches from the outer edge of the rim along your bridge line, of course. Um, so um, just for an example, I actually installed this trigger the first time um, from the two to the three inch mark um, on the outer edge. Um, and that extra inch, I got a huge amount of slap back. So just bringing that back in one inch from the, from the one to two inch mark is where the actual piezo sits. Um, no farther than two inches on the outer edge of the piezo. A beautiful response. Um, single notes all day long. Um, I've actually played live with this drum at this point. Um, ran it through the PA and got nothing but beautiful, beautiful tone um, out of that piezo. So, um, again, with your bass drum, um, because of the size of the head, you're going to want to bring that piezo two inches from the outer edge of your bass drum rim, uh, you know, your edge of your drum here, and come in two inches from the one to two inch mark, and that's where you, that's where you set that. All right, enjoy. Okay, you'll notice with the snare drum that I'm using a chrome or a metal snare what you want to make sure is that you don't ground off the piezo on the side. So what we've done here is Pintech sends uh, extra of the white dots that go underneath the piezo, um, little white two-sided two taped dots. What we did is we doubled those up to make sure that we're not getting any grounding on this point here. Um, this part's fine. Everything, you know, you're supposed to get some ground, you know, or some connection, anyway, for the rim to activate that trigger. But you don't want to ground off uh, the actual piezo itself onto the side of the snare drum. Um, otherwise, you'll get a cancellation. Um, so make sure when you're testing, um, I would test this drum before applying the head or anything else, um, and test your, you know, your rim uh, trigger with your module and just make sure that um, you're not grounding off on the metal. Um, usually that won't be a problem, but if you are seeing that problem, that's what we did to resolve it and it worked brilliantly. Um, I've already gigged with this snare and um, it's phenomenal. Uh, the response on the snare um, through my module um, and I'm not even using uh, one of the nicer modules. Um, the response on this snare was phenomenal. So, um, again, enjoy.